Good morning, folks. Well, sighting spring came by Mars. I watched the close approach live on SLU, but had no visibility of my own due to cloud cover. We were discussing the event live on Skype, me and Mr. Too Tough. There were no major electrical interactions visible from Earth, but the data is downlinking from satellites and rovers at Mars, which we should have in a couple of days at most. Quickly reviewing the current watch periods, in late September we eyed October 14th through the 25th as a time of major upticks in flaring and earthquake activity. Pretty much right off the bat, a new sunspot group began firing M flares from the eastern limb, even before becoming visible on the earth-facing disk. After three M flares, it crested into view and gave us an X-class solar flare, but without major ejecta. The earthquake watch started with a bang as a 7 magnitude earthquake struck Central America. Since that time, however, larger quakes have stayed away while the unusual location rumbling has prevailed. This continued over the last 24 hours as the West Pacific continued its normal moderate levels but with a larger than average quake south of New Zealand near Antarctica. The Caribbean uptick has shifted east and can now be found in the Central Atlantic Ocean and California joins in with an above average quake as well. Will the bigger quakes stay away for the remainder of the watch period? Well, the current corona holds about three times as powerful as the one exiting up north now and it will be a good test. Part of the solar uptick is based on a sunspot ramp as well, not the least of which came in the form of one mega active region with dozens of sunspots contained within her. Looking at the earth facing disk as a whole, we'll begin with that new group that popped up nearly center disk. Got beta complexity, but magnetics are still separated. Meanwhile, our behemoth group has a number of mixing spots. I think we can call this delta in at least three locations the newest of which being between the 1 and 2 o'clock positions from the main umbral core. Also got a new spot cresting, so near-term peak in number should happen soon. New gamma ray burst rang out from Draco this morning. Solar wind showing some rise to speed and density in yellow and orange. No magnetic instability as of yet, however. Flaring is already charging back upward with an M3.9 class solar flare this morning. We'll analyze that in the evening news tonight. But in addition to watching for flaring activity, there are a number of filaments active on the disk, like this one down south. These can erupt and make as large of CMEs as flares themselves, so these are always worth keeping an eye on. Big boy coming in up top. Interesting opportunity to name Rosetta's landing site. They are asking for public opinion. And given that their lander is called Philae, the resting place of Osiris in Egypt, I think Osiris is a fine name for the lander's resting place on this chariot of the gods. Quickly coming to China, where a landslide was captured on dash cam. Also catches one man getting very lucky not to be hurt. Actually, it captured that twice. We also have footage coming in from flooding in the Canary Islands. Lots of tourists and vacationers got caught in these storms and flash flood events. Some fairly significant damage occurred as well. We've also got an animation from NOAA showing just how Japan's typhoons end up crossing all the way across the North Pacific and affecting the U.S. West Coast. Let's kick it to the current tropics watch with Anna still skirting south of Hawaii, set to swing north after getting past the islands. Not that it left them alone, however. In the U.S., we've got the Gulf moisture flowing due west into the desert and a northern pole breaking northeast up towards the Ohio Valley. That makes tonight's watch zones, U.S. southwest and on the convergence up to the north as well. Major moisture flows will once again have rain coming down over wide portions of the territory here, but where it meets even more heat and moisture from the south, we'll have our thunderstorm warnings this evening. Down under, we've got flood watches in the southern corners with a low atop Perth there. And we have another convergence where easterly flows hit a wall right over top of New Zealand. Mobile Observatory Project is in Madisonville, Tennessee today. The meeting at Hiawassee College is a public event if anyone can make it. 
We'll trek west the next couple of days. Head over to observatoryproject.com for times, locations, and other details. Got shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.35 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.